this week's video, we're going to tackle another network buzzword. One of those terms that you might hear your colleagues speaking about. It's Lambda. Now, Lambda is a Greek letter, and we're going to see that it has a special meaning in the network world. Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Kevin. And if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor and give me a like down below and subscribe so you don't miss any of our content, and it really does help the channel. Now, I've got four big objectives for us in this video. Number one, I want us to take a look at a couple of different networking technologies that might use the term Lambda. Specifically, we'll talk about MANs, Metropolitan Area Networks, and we'll talk about bidirectional transceivers and how they work. And the term Lambda, we mentioned it was a Greek letter, but here on screen you see uh, this spectrum of light. Well, we're going to see that Lambda has a couple of different meanings related to light going through a fiber optic cable. One is more of a physics definition, and one is more of a network definition. And we are going to get a little bit mathematical and see the mathematical relationship between frequencies and wavelengths and speed. And we'll see how multiple simultaneous sessions can use the same strand of fiber optic cable through various multiplexing technologies. And before we jump into the content today, I want to let you know about a free ebook. It's a PDF that you can download. It's four ways to get hands on practice for your Cisco exam. In this free ebook, which you can access by going to kwtrain.com slash four ways, I'm going to give you four no cost or low cost options for getting that critical hands on experience that you need for your certification as well as for the real world. Now let's jump into our discussion of lambdas. And the first networking technology that we're going to talk about that uses the term lambda is a MAN, a metropolitan area network. Let's say that we're in Chicago. And let's imagine that in Chicago, there is a service provider that has a fiber optic ring that goes around to different locations within the city. The John Hancock Center, the Willis Tower, the Chicago Board of Trade, the Tribune Tower. And we can have data flowing around this fiber optic ring around the city at very high speeds. Many metropolitan area networks have speeds of 100 gigabits per second. However, let's consider this situation. Let's say that as a service provider, we want this single ring to service multiple customers. And maybe customer one has one of their offices in the John Hancock Center. They have another office in the Chicago Board of Trade building. But we have another customer, customer number two. They have an office in the Tribune Tower. They have another office in the Willis Tower. And the question is, how does the service provider keep customer one's traffic separate from customer two's traffic? And the secret is, they use different lambdas. You can think of a lambda as a color of light a specific wavelength of light. And we'll get into the math behind how that works in a moment. But another networking technology that might use the term lambda is a bi di or a bi-directional transceiver. It might look something like this. Now, traditionally, if we have a fiber optic connection in our networking equipment, such as an ethernet switch like we see here, we've got a couple of fiber optic strands going into a single connector. One fiber optic strand is used for transmitting data. The other fiber optic strand is used for receiving data. However, we're taking up two fiber optic strands for one communication path. With a bi di transceiver, we can have a single strand of fiber optic glass that allows us to simultaneously send and receive traffic. How does that work? Well, the data that we're sending and receiving are going to be using different lambdas. They're going to be using different wavelengths or different colors of light, if you will. And now that we've taken a look at a couple of examples where you might hear the term lambda, let's define what a lambda actually is. And I remember from a physics class that I took in college that in physics, the term lambda refers to a wavelength. If we have a complete cycle of a waveform, and I'm going to give you an example of that in just a moment, the distance it takes for one complete cycle to happen, that's a wavelength or a lambda. And as a point of reference, think of the color red. Red has a lambda of approximately 750 nanometers. That is a very, very short distance. But in networking, you might hear the term lambda used a little bit differently. It's still referring to a color or wavelength of light, but you might hear the term lambda used to describe a point-to-point -point service that a service provider might sell a customer. 
they might have an available wavelength of light that's not being used on a fiber optic cable, and they might sell that lambda to a customer. They might say, for example, we have five lambdas available on this fiber, which might mean they could add five additional customers to that fiber strand, each using a different wavelength or a different lambda of light. Now let's define some of these terms. We've talked about a cycle, we've talked about a wavelength and a waveform. Let's take a step back and define some of these terms. First, let's consider the term frequency. Here we see this blue waveform. It goes up from that center line, it's positive, then it comes back down below that center line, it's negative, and it goes back up to where it started. Once it makes that complete cycle of going up and down and back up, that is considered one cycle and the number of cycles that a waveform completes in a one second period of time, that's called its frequency. Here we see that there are two cycles that happen during a one second period of time. So we say that the frequency is two hertz. Hertz is a unit of measure that means cycles per second. And if you talk to an audio engineer, they might use the term frequency to refer to a property of a sound wave but sound waves travel a lot slower than electromagnetic waves, which we have in Wi-Fi networks, which we have in light or x-rays or microwaves. Specifically, sound waves travel about 331 meters in one second. However, with electromagnetic waves or light, if it's traveling through a vacuum, which is sometimes called a free space, it's gonna be traveling not at 331 meters per second, it's gonna be traveling at 300 million meters per second, which is often written as three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And our focus in this Lambda discussion is on light because light can be sent over a fiber optic cable and the frequencies of light are very, very high. Again, let's use that example of red. The color of red has a frequency of approximately 400 terahertz. Now, how did we look at this big number on screen and get terahertz from that? Well, if we're counting in thousands of hertz or cycles per second, that would be kilohertz. If we're counting in millions of cycles per second, that would be megahertz. If we're counting in billions of cycles per second, that would be gigahertz. And if we're counting in trillions of cycles per second, that's terahertz. So we could say that the frequency of red is approximately 400 terahertz, which we could alternately write as four times 10 to the 14th hertz. And by the way, when we're sending light down a fiber optic cable, it's often towards that red end of the spectrum, even going into the infrared portion of the spectrum, because that end of the spectrum has a longer wavelength, as you can see on screen. If you look at ultraviolet, the wavelengths are much shorter and the frequency is much higher. And as we send light through a fiber optic cable, which does have impurities called dopants in the fiber optic cable, the signal is gonna be degraded, or we call it attenuated, quicker if we're using a higher frequency or a shorter wavelength. So to make sure that we sustain our light wave as long as possible, we veer towards the right side of the spectrum. So the frequency, we're probably talking about in the hundreds of terahertz. Now we said that lambda, the point of this video, we said that was the wavelength. And in just a few moments, I'm gonna be showing you a mathematical relationship between the point of this video, the lambda, the wavelength, and frequency, and the speed of this light wave in the medium. The speed of light, as we mentioned earlier, is 300 million meters per second in a vacuum, oftentimes referred to as free space. We often write that in scientific notation as three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Please keep in mind though, when we're sending light through a fiber optic cable, the glass in that cable is not free space. It's not a vacuum. So technically the speed of light, even though it's close to 300 million meters per second, it's gonna be a little bit slower. Now I promised to show you the relationship mathematically between a lambda or the wavelength of light and the speed of the wave and the frequency of the wave. Here's the formula. We say that the wavelength is the speed of the wave in whatever medium it's in divided by the frequency. And the way this is often written is we use the symbol lambda for wavelength and for the speed, instead of using C, which represents the speed of light, we more commonly use a U, which means the speed in the medium. Now, if the light were in a vacuum, 
then the U would be the speed of light. But if it's going through a fiber optic cable, the U is going to be a little bit less than the speed of light. But for our purposes, we're going to assume that it's really, really close to the speed of light and use that number. And it's going to be the speed of light going through the medium divided by the frequency. And we've already said that the speed of light is about 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And the frequency of red light specifically is about 4 times 10 to the 14th hertz. That's 400 terahertz. And if you put those numbers into a scientific calculator, you're going to get the wavelength of the color red. But the unit of measure your scientific calculator is going to give you is meters per cycle. And it's going to be 0 .000000750. How do we make that a bit more readable? Well, if we go over two decimal places, we might remember that that represents a centimeter. That's one one hundredth of a meter. If we go over another decimal place, that's going to be a millimeter. One one thousandth of a meter. If we go over three additional decimal places, that's going to be a micrometer, or some people pronounce that as micrometer. And if we go over three additional decimal places, that's going to be a nanometer. Typically, when we're talking about light waves, we use nanometers as our unit of measurement for the wavelength. And you can see in this diagram on screen that if we're approaching ultraviolet, we're at about 380 nanometers. But if we're approaching infrared, we're at about 780 nanometers. But in this case, with these values for the speed in the medium and the frequency, we can say that the color red has an approximate wavelength of 750 nanometers. And we could send that wavelength of light through a fiber optic cable and send a completely separate signal, maybe servicing another customer, using a different wavelength of light. By separating communications channels into different wavelengths, that's called multiplexing. And let's take a look at a few common multiplexing options. The first one is coarse wavelength division multiplexing, or CWDM. This typically does not support that many channels. Because the measurements are more coarse, they're not that exacting. So typically, eight channels max for CWDM. However, over short distances, it is technically possible to get as many as 18 channels. And with coarse wavelength division multiplexing, every lambda, or every wavelength, is separated by 20 nanometers in between those different lambdas. That way, we don't have one lambda overlapping with another lambda. And this approach to multiplexing different colors of light that can get us about 80 kilometers. However, it does not support amplifiers along the way. If we need more channels on a fiber optic strand, and if we need to go further, then we might instead turn to DWDM, Dense Wavelength Division Multiplexing. Here, we can have as many as 80 channels, and the measurements are much more exacting. Instead of having a whopping 20 nanometers of gap in between our adjacent lambdas, We've got 0.4 nanometers of gap between these adjacent lambdas. And we can support a maximum distance of approximately 3,000 kilometers. And unlike CWDM, DWDM, it does support amplifiers, which allows us to reach that incredible length of 3,000 kilometers. And another type of multiplexing we talked about earlier with those bi-dye transceivers. That allows a single fiber optic strand to simultaneously transmit and receive data. And that's possible because that transceiver is using one wavelength or one lambda to send data, and it's receiving using a different lambda. And that's called bidirectional WDM, or bidirectional wavelength division multiplexing. So if you ever find yourself at a tech conference where people are using the term lambda, or maybe a colleague is using the term lambda, hopefully after watching this video, you're going to have a sense for what lambdas are all about. They're simply different wavelengths of light. And we can keep different communications channels separate by using different wavelengths. And if you enjoyed this video on lambdas, I picked out a couple of other videos that will be great follow-ups to this video. So I would highly recommend that you check out one of these videos next. Thanks for joining me for this week's video, and I really look forward to chatting with you again next time.